Hi, my name's Neil. I'm going to be your nurse for today. Can I get your name and date of birth? It's Ricky Brown, 11 9 of 80. All right. So we're going to go with patient's wristband here, make sure the name and date of birth are correct with what the patient told me. We can also get a feel for the patient's skin color, temperature, and turgor. We're then going to look at his nail beds, his overall appearance, and his hair. Make sure they appear as well-groomed, not unkempt or disheveled. Do you know where you are today, Mr. Brown? Yes, I'm in the hospital. Do you know what day of the week it is? It is Sunday. And do you know who the president is? It is Donald Trump. All right. So the patient appears to be alert and oriented, answering all questions appropriately. And through my talking with him, his speech appears very clear and coherent. Do you know of any open wounds that you have in your body, Mr. Brown? No open wounds. Okay. We're also going to be able to assess the uh, signs of distress with his ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. We know that his airway is open since he's been having this conversation with me. His breathing pattern appears to be normal and regular, and his circulation was good from what we saw with his skin, color, temperature, and his general appearance. All right, so I see that they already did vital signs on you today, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to move along with an assessment. I'm going to start with the respiratory assessment of the patient. Look at his general work of breathing, and make sure that that appears fairly normal and not in any distress. We're going to assess the patient's thorax, looking at the size, shape, and make sure that it is symmetrical on the front and back of the chest. So Mr. Brown, we're going to go ahead and listen to lung sounds here. So I'm going to have you take a nice deep breath with each point that I listen to. We're going to start up here in the first intercostal space. and turn this way on to the side of the bed <clears throat> so you can listen to your back. The same thing if you can take a nice deep breath. So what we're looking for is good, clear lung fields. Patient's lung fields appear to be very clear all around with no extra effort. Uh, we could be looking for adventitious lung sounds such as wheezes or crackles. Crackles might indicate CHF and wheezes may be an indicator of some asthma going on. So if you want to go ahead and sit back in the bed, we're going to go ahead and move along with the cardiovascular assessment. So we're going to move along here to the cardiovascular assessment, starting with heart sounds. So we're going to listen to the heart sounds here, starting at the right second intercostal space for the aortic heart sounds. Then we're going to listen to the pulmonic location on the left side, still second intercostal space. We move down here to Herb's point, third intercostal space. The tricuspid at the fourth intercostal space. And then down to the fifth intercostal space for the mitral. And this is where we would hear the apical pulse because this is the point of maximal impulse. <clears throat> so during listening, we were able to notice that the patient's heart was in normal rate and rhythm. There was no palpitations going on, and it was at between 60 and 100 beats per minute. We could also take this time to check the patient's lymph nodes which would be an indicator of an, any infections going on if there was swelling of the lymph nodes. And we can move on here to peripheral pulses. So we're going to check cap refill here real quick, see how the nail beds do with their refill. And it's less than two seconds. We're going to be doing that on both sides of the body. 
So we're going to be doing the same thing with radial pulses here and ulnar pulses on both arms. We're going to be moving up and checking the brachial pulse here. Then the patient's carotid pulse, again, on both sides. At this time, we can also observe for any jugular vein distension here, although that would be best observed with the patient lying back in a 45 degree angle. And we check for any extra pressure going on. We're going to move down to the lower extremities. So we're going to check femoral pulse here bilaterally. Then at the back of the knee, popliteal pulse. <clears throat> As we move down the leg, we can assess for any edema here. So we can see that there's good rebound here and no pitting. Edema would be scaled from a zero to, zero to four, and since this patient does not have any, they'd be a zero. We're gonna feel down for the dorsal pedal pulse, again on both sides, and at the back of the ankle here. All right, Mr. Brown, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with our gastrointestinal assessment here. So I'm gonna look at the mucosa of your lips, teeth, and gums. It appears that they are all moist and intact, so that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and look at your belly. Is it okay if we lift your shirt for this? Yes. So we're gonna inspect for the color, the contour, the symmetry, and also look for any masses or pulsations on the surface of the belly. We can also look at the skin for any scars and striations or any venous issues. We're gonna go ahead and look at the overall abdominal girth, making sure that there's no distension which could indicate some swelling inside the abdomen. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to listen to your belly here. We're gonna to listen to bowel sounds, starting in the right lower quadrant here. And working our way clockwise. And we can spend up to five minutes in each quadrant listening for bowel sounds. to check whether they are normal, hypoactive, hyperactive, or absent. And we want to spend the five minutes before declaring that they are hypoactive or absent. We can also palpate the quadrants of the abdomen for any tenderness. If he was having any abdominal pain, we want to palpate that part of the abdomen last to not cause pain in the abdomen. And we can assess also for any rebound tenderness here if we were worried about something with the appendix and with rebound tenderness, he would feel pain when we actually released, not when we were pressing. We also would be able to percuss for any tympany or dullness, which could indicate air-filled organs or fluid-filled organs, which could be an indication of organ swelling and ascites. And Mr. Brown, when was your last bowel movement? Yesterday. And have you been having regular bowel movements? Yes. Are they on normal consistency also? Yes. And how about your urinary patterns? They're consistent. Uh, no concerns with your urine? No foul odors? Abnormal amounts? Nope. No pain on urination? Nope. Excellent. All right, Mr. Brown, since we're on the subject of it, do you perform a regular testicular self-exam on yourself? Yes. And you're aware that the best time and place for you to do that would be in the warm shower? Yes. Excellent. All right, Mr. Brown, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with the neurological assessment and musculoskeletal assessment. So we already, we already know that the patient is alert and oriented from our earlier assessment. So we're gonna go ahead and check with your grips. So if I can have you squeeze both my sides real quick looking for equal strength in each hand. Go ahead and let go. I'm gonna have you push up with your hands for me against resistance and then push down for me here. All right, same thing we're gonna do with your feet here. You go ahead and push out a little bit with your legs. All right, I'm gonna have you point your toes up towards the ceiling and then push down like you're on a gas pedal. Excellent. I'm gonna have you go ahead and we're gonna stand up here. We're gonna observe the patient for normal gait and balance. So I'm going to have you go ahead and walk that way across the room a few steps and then stop. And maybe turn around, you're going to come back to me heel to toe. And again, we're going to be assessing for the patient's balance here. And maybe stand here in front of the bed with your feet together, arms to your sides. We're just going to make sure with the Romberg test that the patient can maintain the balance while standing. Excellent. So if you want to go ahead and have a seat here. 
going to go ahead and look at your pupils here. Bright light. So the pupils look equal and reactive. There is normal dilation and constrictive constriction going on. The sclera and the conjunctiva appear to be intact with no jaundice. We already know that the patient has adequate hearing just from talking with them and hearing their responses. We could, res could perform a Ryan Weber test by using a tuning fork and placing it on the top of the skull here and on the maxillary process here. Mr. Brown, I have a pen here. Can you tell me what color the tip of my pen is? It's blue. Okay. I'm going to move this pen around a little bit. I want you to follow with your eyes only. Keep your head still for me, okay? Yes. So we can check the patient's field of gaze here. Check and make sure that their eye movements are normal up, down, back and forth, and also on the diagonal. Since we've already assessed the patient's grips and arm strength, we can assign a musculoskeletal strength on a scale of 0 to 5, where 0 would be completely flaccid and 5 would be normal strength. So this patient would be scored as a 5 with normal strength with gravity and no assistive measures. We can also at this time measure the patient's joints and range of motion. So we want to look for any issues with deformity or symmetry. So we're looking at the shoulders, the elbows, the hips, the knees, ankles, wrists. So tests such as having the patient lift their arm out to the side here and back down. Go ahead and extend your elbow. All right. And same thing with your knee. Can you go ahead and extend? So we want to make sure that there's no pain, tenderness, and that they have good range of motion. Some issues that we might find by doing this would be in the cases of shoulder dislocation. You might see some deformity there. If the patient has carpal tunnel syndrome, they may have pain in their wrists. And also issues such as kyphosis and scoliosis in the back if the patient's spine is not quite straight as it should be.